about what a laminar wedge is and uh, why that laminar wedge is important. When a hoof flares, it doesn't matter if it uh, becomes deformed through laminitis or founder or just um, lack of hoof care and the hoof grows long and it flares all the way around. Um, I want to explain to you why that laminar wedge is important and how rasp and what it is and how rasping it off the hoof wall uh, destroys that protection of the hoof that the hoof has developed to try and stabilize what is called the coffin bone which is the bone that is right inside the hoof here. Now um, this bone is also called the pedal bone uh, but it's commonly known as the coffin bone. Um, it's also called the distal phalange or the third phalange or uh, the third phalanx or P3. Okay, but most of the time we just call it the coffin bone. You know, I Google images a lot and um, to look at hooves, different kinds of hooves. And so I would Google coffin bones a lot and I would get, also get pictures of a lot of coffins, you know, the things they bury dead people in. And what I've come to realize is that that this bone inside this hoof is to remain stable and totally unmoving just like a dead person in a coffin and uh, I think that's how it wind up getting the name coffin bone uh, anyway that's just my theory <clears throat> okay now when a hoof flares okay usually it grows out a little bit here all around the edges and as the horse walks um, it starts tearing this wall away from the bone like this and more and more and it travels up like so okay now without a laminar wedge which is um, the lamina reproducing there would be a big gap right here in between the flare just a minute this hoof would flare out like this and there'd be a big gap in here like so okay what happens when that hoof starts to flare um, and there's inflammation and tearing the lamina goes to work to fill up the gap with um, a, the spongy lamina material the same thing the white line is made out of okay and it produces what's called a laminar wedge. You see how this is a wedge shape here? And sometimes you'll see a couple of them in the hoof. If you look at my, uh, the vi first video I did on uh, horse hoof anatomy on a budget and you look at the inside of that hoof you'll see some little wedges that the hoof has formed in there um, to try and hold the coffin bone uh, in a stable position right here okay so uh, because the hoof wall is very very hard on the outside and gets softer as you go in okay if you start rasping into the softer layers just to make it look like a nice hoof up like that what you do is you destabilize this wedge in here and you cause more inflammation and more damage to the connection between the hoof wall and the bone. You gotta realize you've only got a little hoof wall that's that thick on that hoof. Okay, anything you take off to destabilize it, um, there's so much weight on that whole wall and that and that's where you get um, if you I'm not explaining things too good this morning if you take off hoof wall that's where you get you'll see it um, it'll be a bell flare like that and it happens on the sides it happens at the toe and everywhere Skeeter get down this is Skeeter hi Skeeter say hi you sure good girl Okay, come on, get out. Okay, that's why this stretched white line 
and this wedge goes clear up into here. Not a very nice hoof. Okay. And so sometimes it's clear up into here like that. And so basically you have to grow that wedge out down here to get this bone up here growing down. All this will grow down, all this wedge, but to get this bone up here growing down to where it's once again nice and close and tight and attached or to get this bone, to get the hoof wall growing down to where it's nice and tight and attached to the bone once more. Now you can't do this all at once and and that's why you know I cut off this toe because I want to get a good connection here first and slowly um, at, you know because you have the same things going on in the sides see there's a laminar wedge in the sides too that are attached to that bone not the greatest artist this morning so you want that wedge growing out on the sides too but I try and concentrate at first just getting a good connection on that toe I don't worry about scooping the quarters or anything like that because I want this horse to have as much support here as possible on the sides and in the heel while I'm getting a good connection on that toe here okay so when I do a foot that has been way flared out okay here's the bone usually if there hasn't been a lot of laminitis the bone has been stabilized by the wedge that has been produced in there okay so when I come and I, I just want to take off the toe I want to leave as much of this hoof wall because I want to keep this wedge stabilized in here to stabilize the bone okay so I don't want to take off a lot of the I don't want to rasp down like this just to make a nice looking foot you make it a, a pretty foot that is still unhealthy and so that is why I'll take my nippers or whatever I got to do and and I want to leave as much of this wedge as possible when a when a poof is really really long okay I'm not just gonna cut it straight off like this okay because that's gonna destabilize some of that wedge sometimes to start out with I'll even do an angle like that say that still leaves that wedge in there and the bone stabilized you know um, but the main point is that you have got in order to get this wall growing back down and get rid of this laminar wedge that's been put in there you have got to get the leverage off the toe 